Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our spring release webinar. Uh, thank you for joining us. I hope everybody's well wherever you're viewing from. Today we're going to be look at, looking at some of the enhancements we've made to CompuCare over the past three months. Uh, so we're going to be looking over five iterations of CompuCare. Uh, some of you may remember from previous webinars, we usually cover around three bills. Uh, the reason we're looking over five instead is that we've made a change to how we develop the system and we've moved to three week cycles, which were previously six weekly. Uh, the main benefit for this is if any urgent enhancements we've made can then get implemented into the system quicker. So looking at some of the key elements we'll be diving into in today's webinar. Uh, we have the new to come in time functionality for surgical bookings, uh, improved waitlist capabilities, enhancements to the attendance charge rule uh, and improvements to order communications duplicate service requests. And to introduce everyone involved before we go into the enhancements, my name's Tom and I'll be running through some slides with you uh, before handing over to my colleagues Mark and Imogen who both have live demos of the system. Then finally we have Stuart handling the Q&A, so please take full advantage of this and add any questions you have into the Q&A tab. Uh, this can be found at the Teams bar at the top. So moving into our system improvements, uh, the first improvement I'd like to highlight is a change within our debit and credit card payment function. Uh, we've changed PXP AnyPay key to use PXP iframe. This change has been made when adding a payment card to a patient. Uh, so the reason we introduced this is to make us out of scope of the PCI DSS, basically meaning we don't have confidential card data written into CompuCare 8 and instead it's all entered in via the PXP iframe. So with your payment provider set to PXP AnyPay within global settings, the screenshots will show you for, for a pre-authorization of a on a card for one penny. Uh, this is something that's set in global settings also. Um, once you've entered the basic details here, it now directs you to this screen, the PXP financial checkout screen to now enter all the confidential card details. Uh, the next feature I'd like to go into is relating to charges. It's the ability to set an issuing location when adding a charge collection. Within the add patient charge screen with the add, with the add a charge collection toggle set to yes, you now have the ability to overwrite the issu issuing location from a default location. Uh, this is done by going over to setting cog over here uh, and then toggling this option to yes. Uh, it will then update all locations for the charge in this collection to match the issuing location selected. Uh, in this case, it was a day case ward. Uh, this is beneficial as there's some contracts that stipulate that the charge location needs to be the same. So another enhancement we've made within charges is that when overriding the price on a patient charge, the system should give you the option to apply the same charge to the provider element. It's another simple toggle we've added here. And now with this selected to yes and the price override amount is entered, uh, it will automatically update the provider charge. You can see down the bottom left corner based on the provider percentage of the override price. Uh, moving on next, we have a further enhancement with uh, integrated care boards. Uh, so these now import into CompuCare as part of the GP update. Now you may remember in our previous webinar, we added integrated care boards into CompuCare. Uh, now, when adding a GP update into the system, it will now auto populate the ICB into the CCG. Uh, as you can see here in the screenshot, the ICB is showing within the CCG. Uh, so when you upgrade your iteration of CompuCare, um, our support team can also assist with a GP update on your system to, uh, to get all this information updated as well. Next, we have an enhancement when it comes to searching within service request components. We've now added a new toggle that we've highlighted here, labeled auto wildcard search. This simply means that when a search is performed using the form component, users will no longer be required to enter a question mark at the beginning of the search. Um, so instead, it will automatically bring up close match results to the text that's being entered in there. We now have a couple of enhancements that we've made within orders. Uh, so the first is the ability for the report templates to have options to email on them and to automatically populate the referring practice email address. Uh, so as you can see here, we have a screenshot of report preview and the destination set to the email option. Uh, we've added this practice email button here. So when pressing it, it then copies the GP email address that is registered within the episode of Care Source through. Following on from the previous slides, uh, we have the same screenshot, 
Uh, we've also added this include additional attachment toggle at the bottom here. So when this is selected, it will give you a list of all available attachments that can be sent with this email and you simply click and choose which attachment below you, you want to attach to the email. Moving on, we've now updated how we support EDI imports into the system. Uh, previously, when these are imported, they're added as an REM or REM file. Uh, Health Code have discontinued this process and are moving solely into the XML file import. So with the de decommissioning of the REM or REM file format, it's worth noting that we already export XML files to Health Code for the EDI submission. So it's a case of matching the imported remittance file to this format. Uh, this is effective from the 1st of July 2023 and is supported from CompuCare Build 850 onwards, which we released in February. Now, finally, before we move into our live demos, uh, we have an important update around FIM reporting and CDS submissions. So from April the 1st, uh, the NHS implemented an updated version of the OPCS classification and intervention of procedures, moving from OPCS 4.09 to OPCS 4.10. Uh, any data submitted relating to patients discharged after April the 1st needs to be coded in the latest 0 0.10 version. Likewise, anything submitted relating to patients discharged prior to the 1st of April should be in 0.09. Um, so essentially, clients who submit CDS reports to the NHS will need to update their CompuCare code tables. And additionally, if you submit reports to FIN, you'll also need to ensure your code tables are in line with OPCS 4.10. Uh, our support team are available to assist with anything relating to this, whether that be upgrading or any more clarification or information. And further to the previous slide, uh, I can also confirm that moving forward in builds 853 and 854, we will be further enhancing this aspect of the system. So as you can see with the new APC, MDS and adverse events files and the new CDS version all being updated. Once again, please reach out to our support team should you require any assistance with this. So now I'm gonna hand you over to my colleagues, Mark and then Imogen, who are gonna run through a live demo of some of the enhancements we've made over the past five builds of CompuCare. Great, thanks very much for that, Tom. Um, and good afternoon, good morning, everybody. So, as, as Tom mentions, a couple of enhancements that we're running through today between our 848 builds and 852 builds. Um, so, I'm just going to run you through a few of them to get us started. So, the first one I just wanted to take a look at is relating to episode of care source. So, the purpose of this development is to make the URN number in an episode of care mandatory. Uh, this is likely to assist our customers who receive manual referrals through for NHS patients or anything like that uh, if they're not processed through ERS. Um, by making the uh, URN mandatory, it's just going to help users with their reporting and invoicing and bits like that. So to get started for this one, if we just go and add a new episode of care. Just going to fill in some uh, standard patient details here. So the way that this is going to pull through into your system is using the episode of care source. So I'm just going to go and select one here. And if we just go into the edit icon, this is the new cut toggle that we've added to CompuCare. So you can see it says, is URM required? And users just need to toggle that on if they want to make it mandatory for that specific episode of care source. So if we go ahead and save that now, you can see in our episode of care source, it's made the URN field mandatory. So that's the first one I wanted to, uh, to move on, uh, to talk about. The next one I'm going to talk about is relating to our new time to come in functionality. And um, there's a couple of enhancements I want to run you through for this. Uh, the first one we're going to look at um, links into the scheduling settings, and the second one links more based on the procedure. So we'll we'll take a look at each of them individually. Um, so the new functionality that we've brought in should just help uh, users with patients procedure times and things and it should just help things like patient waiting times as well uh, if they've got a specific time they need to come in. So if we have a look in the scheduling settings. Uh, in our surgical section you can see we've got a new patient arrival time buffer. Uh, again this is tooltip so it does just give users a hint about how to use it. And what this is suggesting is this is going to be the default time in your CompuCare system that patients should be arriving uh, before their surgical procedures. So we've got this one set to 60 minutes in our system just so we can see it working. Uh, you can set that however you like in yours. Uh, and then once you've clicked apply, it should take effect. So if we have a look at this in action, 
I'm just going to pull in a new surgical book in uh, so we can see this working. So if we just fill in the details at the top there that I've got ready already. So I'm just going to make it ad hoc um, so we can have a look at the different timings working. You can see if we set this appointment to be 11.15, it's just going to suggest to the user that the time to come in for this patient should be around 10.15. Uh, you can manually override this so if you changed my uh, if you thought of oh, actually we probably prefer the patient to be coming in at 915 instead you can change it and it won't cause any validation issues or anything like that so that's available as well uh, if we then go and click save as well once we put a theater in Uh, if we go ahead and print the surgical letter, so an extra enhancement we've kind of added to this request is just bringing that information into the uh, letter builder as well. So you'll see here I've got an arrival time uh, and then what I've just done is I've put the, the new uh, time to come in. It's called on your letter designer and it will just pull through that those details from that field for you. So you can put it into things like surgical booking letters and things like that as well. Perfect. So that's everything I wanted to show you for that one. So if we moved on to the procedure uh, based time to come in time, if we just go into the same booking again. And I'm just going to change uh, some of the information around here. So you can see it's got all one that's based on the schedule settings that we've got in the system. If I then go and start to add procedures. So I'm going to pick a procedure here and against this particular procedure, uh, you'll see in the code tables here, we've also added the same field in there. So we've got that patient arrival time buffer again. So if we go and add a different time so we can see how it triggers, I'm just going to add this one as two hours before the appointment. Uh, if we go ahead and save that, and again, if we save that, you should just see it's just changed our time to come in time. And similar to the, the previous user story, you can go ahead and change that time to come in time. It's uh, It won't cause any validation issues or anything like that. It's just going to trigger from what you've got set up in your procedure tables. Um, well, an extra thing they have added to this enhancement as well, if you go ahead and add uh, multiple procedures. So if we go ahead and add this one as well, and I'm just going to put this as a an extra buffer, so we'll say three hours for this one just so we can see it working. Uh, the time to come in time is always going to be based from your longest buffer time on which on the procedures that you've got in your planned procedures. So it doesn't matter if you kind of reorder these procedures or anything like that. It will keep that to the uh, longest buffer time that you've got set in the system. So it's worth bearing that in mind. Perfect, that's everything I wanted to run through for those. Uh, so moving on to our next set of uh, enhancements that we've added. Um, there's one for 851 here and one for 848, and they're both related to our waiting list entries. So if we jump into the waiting list entries app, um, the first one that we've added is a new notes field. Uh, so previously, if you had any notes against your waiting list entries, uh, you would have clicked on the selected one and then scrolled down in the reading pane. You can see we've got the notes section here. Uh, we did have requests from users just if they're using this grid quite often they found it easier if they had the notes in column so we have added that ability for them now uh, if you can't see this in your CompuCare system already on your waiting list you can just go into the show uh, column chooser and you'll see that it comes up as uh, notes there so that's the way you would add it to your CompuCare systems uh, if we go ahead and add some kind of sample notes to this one just so we can see how it looks in the system um, so i'm just going to put some test notes in here uh, So if we just add that in and click save, you can see it does just add it to that middle column. So if you can imagine if you've got several sets of notes here, they will just filter down and you can view them at a quick, uh, a quick glance. Uh, you can also copy the notes here, so that's available as well. Uh, if you need to quick copy them into another area of the system, of course, you can kind of uh, move this column about as required to uh, how you want your users to see it. Uh, it will become scrollable as well. So if you if you have a big notes section in here, you've added quite a lot of booking notes to the waiting list entry. Uh, it will be scrollable as well, so you can will be able to scroll through the note. Perfect. So moving on to the next one, and um, the next one we've got is a uh, tag functionality. So we've added a new tag functionality to the waiting list entries. Uh, this is based off of our tag manager tool, which we released a few builds ago now. And uh, the purpose of this is it's just going to add the ability in your waiting list to just filter them down a bit further. Um, so I've added a tag in already called high priority. And what this does is uh, it will just filter the screen down and it will base it on that specific tag. So you can see once we click it, it's just going to let us uh, have a look at all the high priority tags in our waiting list. 
You can also do this from our uh, Tag Manager tool. So if we just go into there and have a look at our high priority uh, tag that we've got set up, you can see as with our other tags, it highlights the column in the middle for the particular area that it's relating to. So because this is a wait and list one, it's just got the wait and list board highlighted there. And by clicking that, it's just again going to take you into that waiting list and it's going to filter down the ones that you've got set as high priority there. Um, so the way you can add this to waiting list entries, once you're filling in the edit waiting list entry, um, you can just add it by adding the tag here. So it will give users the option to add tags as required. Uh, you can set the tag up in the tag manager as we previously had a look at. Uh, you will see as well, there's a new due date here. Um, so this isn't currently a mandatory field, uh, but it is something that will be affected by tags going forward in future builds. Uh, so the aim is that once you add a tag to your waiting list entries, for example, if we use the high priority example there, um, it will pull through an automatic due date. So it's going to use a buffer. So it's, this is just preparing for that enhancement, uh, but users can use that field now if they want to, just to add due dates to things like waiting list entries and things like that. Perfect, that's everything I always show you for our waiting list uh, entries enhancement. So the final enhancement I'm going to talk today, talk through today before we hand over to Imogen, uh, it's just a enhancement we've added, which now uh, is a few additional code tables we've added to our CompuCare system. Uh, we're hoping that these code tables are just uh, more accurately help describe individuals and their identities. So this is a bit easier to pick up. Uh, we're hoping by incorporating these changes, it will allow a more comprehensive and diverse range of options to choose from in the system, uh, creating a bit of a, a more inclusive system for patient and providers. Um, so in order to help us with these changes, we'll have a look at the code tables in a second. Uh, we have, wherever possible, uh, stuck as closely as possible to the NHS data dictionary and advice on these sections. Uh, we have got a very good user story, which you can watch, which one of our developers, Alex, has produced. So if you go onto the release notes, you should be able to watch that uh, and it will come up with a bit more information for you. So if we have a look at the new code table entries that we've added. Uh, there are three that we've added. So the first one is for uh, gender identities. Um, so this is a protected code table, so it's hard coded into the system. Uh, users won't be able to change this. This is again just because we've related it to, to the NHS kind of data dictionaries and advice around that. So it will just give users the option now to add a gender identity. Uh, so this is of course what the individual identifies themselves as uh, in the system. We've also added another one called gender pronouns. Uh, we have pre-filled this with some information for you. So of course it's got ones like he, him, she, her, they, them, and we've got a couple of others as well. Uh, this isn't a hard coded table, so we have given uh, users the ability to add new ones in here if they want to. So once they go to add a new one, it will just ask for what name you want against the gender pronoun and then any notes for guidance as well. So that's the second one. And the final one that we've added is the sexes table. Uh, again, this is a hard coded table because it's just sticking to those uh, NHS data dictionary and guidelines around this. But this is, of course, the uh, birth sex of the individual. So it just gives that information as well. Uh, so if we have a look at this in action, I'm just going to jump into one of my patients. Uh, we'll just use one that I've got open here. If I go to edit the patient record. And I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. You'll see that I've already got these added in. Um, I've added these in before uh, the webinar, but if you haven't got these added in, it's just a case of going into your edit layout option and the three lines on the side, you'll see these as available items now. So if you want to add these to your CompuCare system, that is how you would do it. Uh, so you'll notice we do have the gender field still available. This is probably a field that you've seen before in CompuCare. Uh, what we've done for the, just for the first stage of development, we are open to feedback on this is we've just kept that as it is currently. So this is the field that will relate to your things like fin submissions and things like that. So we'd we'd advise to just use this field how you've currently been using it. Uh, if we have a look at the new ones, of course, we've got the kind of sex biological ones. So if we fill that in, we say uh, male for this one, uh, the gender identity one. So this is what the individual identifies themselves as. So if we go for that one. And then of course, we've got the gender pronoun one at the end. So if we had that as they them for this particular one, so once we click save there, it's going to do a couple of different things. So firstly, you can see it's just added to our patient banner. It's just uh, it's just given us the pronouns that this person prefers to be used. Uh, so that should just be a good hint for when uh, your users are speaking to the patient, either face to face or on the phone and things like that. 
Um, it just gives them that hint as uh, what the correct pronoun pronouns to respect this individual's identity are. If we just drop down into the extended information in the banner as well, you can see we've got the sex, the biological, so it gives us that information. And it also just drops in the gender identity information as well as what this individual prefers uh, as their identity. Perfect. So, uh, of course, of any of our developments, we are open to feedback and things like that. There will be a sales and marketing information, contact details flash up at the end of the webinar. Uh, if you use this in your systems as well as our other developments and you've got any feedback, please feel free to let us know. Uh, we're always open to seeing how this works in users' workflows and then uh, developing it as required. So, yeah, please do let us know on any feedback on those. So I'm going to hand you over to Imogen now and she's just going to run through a few more of our enhancements that we've added. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, hello, everyone. Um, so I'm just going to run through a few more of the uh, enhancements that will be available in the spring release. Um, so I just started, wanted to start off in impatience. Um, so one of the uh, new enhancements we have is regarding um, the ability to copy and um, view the previous um, diagnosis codes from previous inpatient bookings. Um, so a really nice example for this is is um, ophthalmology. Um, so now if you've got a patient that's coming in for multiple procedures, um, you can then actually now um, view and copy these across so just to try and make that a little bit easier for the user when they're doing their clinical coding. Um, so to show you how this looks, I'm just going to jump into my inpatients. Um, so currently I've got a, a patient that's uh, come in um, for uh, cataract removal of the uh, left eye. And um, the, the patient has been discharged, is now ready to be clinical coded. Um, so this particular patient has actually already come in for um, cataracts in the right eye. Um, so that that's already been clinically coded previously. Um, so I'm now going to clinically code the, um, the left eye. So if I select clinical code up at the top. Um, so now, as you can see on the reading pane on this side, we've now got um, the option to see previous diagnosis codes that have been used and then um, I can actually now um, copy these so if there was obviously if there was multiple I could copy across or I could just select the ones that I would like and then those are going to pull through into the diagnosis code box as well um, so again we're just trying to make that a little bit easier for especially um, those multiple um, bookings under one episode of care so that's how it's going to trigger is based on um, those inpatient bookings that are a part of the same episode of care and it's just going to make that a little bit easier easier. Um, so if I just come out of here, um, so another um, enhancement that we have got uh, regarding inpatients um, is, is a little bit around the billing episodes, but we've got a couple of scenarios that this may work for. Um, so if I select another patient that I've got um, currently coming in, if I just edit their booking. So one of the things that we now have in the system is obviously you've always been able to add billing episodes to your bookings because um, obviously that's how um, the invoices and the charges are then going to get derived from. Um, but we now have the ability to add multiple billing episodes to one um, um, booking. So as you can see here, I've got a patient that's come uh, has got two um, billing episodes for the uh, the same booking. So this particular patient, uh, for this example, is coming in for a 48 hour ECG, and um, they're actually related to um, two separate contracts. So we've got I've got one night for each. Um, so how this would work is obviously you add your billing episode as normal, um, but we now have this option to add more. So if I select my top one, you can just quickly see how this works in practice. Um, so what I've done is I've selected my purchaser contract as normal, and I've currently got the start date for today. Um, so this particular contract only relates to this one, and it's got the length of stay as a one-nighter. Um, so if I save that and then come back out and then if I have a look at the second contract that I've got set up, um, you can then see that this is then related to tomorrow. Um, so what is then obviously going to happen is any charges that are related to today will go on to the first billing episode and any charges that are related for tomorrow that will go on to the second billing episode. So obviously, um, as you work with that in practice, um, these will actually then split into separate invoices as well. So if I just come out of this booking, and then if I just go to uh, info only bill, we'll be able to see um, what I mean. 
So as you can see, as I um, infer only bill my patient, I can see I've got one invoice which is relates to today. So I've got charges for accommodation and a 24 hour ECG. And then if I have a look at the next one, I then have a second invoice um, for uh, inpatient accommodation again and um, a 24 hour ECG. And obviously this then relates for tomorrow's um, date. So essentially what this is going to do is obviously then provide the patient with um, uh, two invoices for this day. So normally this relates to things like if you've got a fixed price package, um, but that uh, branches across multiple days, but you need multiple of those for that stay. Um, another example for how this can work in your system is um, for when you have long stay patients, um, it may be that halfway through their care, um, that their um, authorization numbers change or even if they change their um, purchaser halfway through it now means that you can actually then change those on the uh, on the billing episode so rather than having to um, have a really clunky work away work around for it you can now just add that extra billing episode and then say when it's going to start and obviously when the other ones ended so hopefully again that's going to make that a little bit easier especially for um, those uh, users who are actually dealing with sort of long stay patients or even in the scenario that I've just given given you. Uh, so while we're looking at uh, contracts and charges, there's um, another um, uh, user story that I wanted to uh, talk to you about. Um, so we've extended the um, attendance charge rule. So obviously many of you will be already using this to automate your um, consultant fees uh, for patients that are, are coming in. So um, the standard charges but what we've done is we've now extended this rule um, to cater for variations um, so obviously the pandemic brought up lots and lots of different variations for how um, consultants can see patients um, so again what we've tried to do is try to make this rule a bit more accommodating for those different options. Uh, so just showing you how this works from a contract rule and then I'll show you how it actually works in practice. So if I just go and have a look at one of my contracts. Um, so I've just got um, a self-pay contract set up and I've got my hip clinic. Um, so again, looks looks as normal. This is a child contract I'm dealing with, but it will also work for a parent contract as well. So it depends on how you're uh, setting them up. So if I just have a look at my uh, charge rule and just edit those. Um, so I've got a couple that are already set up and if I just um, drill into one of them. Um, so we now have um, additional fields that are now available. Um, so on here I've then got um, the treatment function service. So this is now available. So obviously mine's set up for a hip clinic. But obviously that's however you would like to do. So essentially what this is now going to look at is the actual treatment function service of the appointment as well as just your standard, standard specialties. Um, We've also now got the ability to set contact type as well. So for this example, I'm showing a Teams consultation. Um, so this is then obviously going to link whether these are face to face or not. So um, as I mentioned, obviously, with the pandemic, there was a lot more um, remote consultations that are now coming through. Um, so rather than having to add those manually, this will then hopefully make those a little bit more automated. So again, the, the final um, extra field that's now been added or variation that you can now use is um, a duration range. Um, so again, obviously you can set this and then CompuGare is going to look at the appointment and based on whether see if it fits in with this duration. Um, so standardly, as the um, you would set up for these uh, type of uh, contract rules, um, I've got um, my charge over here. Um, so that's already all ready to go. So if I press save. Um, so before I leave this screen, there's a couple of other things that I just wanted to mention. Um, we do have um, some additional columns that are now available um, to reflect these new fields that are now available for your um, attendance charge rule. Um, so we now have treatment function service is now available and we also have contact type and booking duration. So again, you can just see those um, from this screen rather than having to drill down if you don't need to. Um, again, similar to obviously Mark's already showed you, if you don't have these available, um, you just select them through your um, column chooser and they'll be available for you to then add on. Uh, so if I just save this and then just come back out um, and if I select a patient that I've currently got, so if I just go into my check-in screen, I've got obviously I've got a few patients that are due in today, um, but I've got Zane Lowe that's coming in for a um, uh, appointment with uh, Dr Jones for uh, a hip clinic. 
So if I just edit my booking quickly, I can show you how what I've got set up currently. Um, so I've got my billing episode as um, the uh, hip clinic contract that I've just shown you. Um, currently, the patient is coming in for 20 minutes and uh, I've got my treatment function as a hip. And then it's also down, is it follow-up? No. And then is it a face-to-face? -face? No. So it's going to be a team's consultation. And this is then obviously going to derive what's going to, uh, what the attendance charge rule that's then going to go on there. Uh, so if I just cancel out of this and then if I go to um, info only this bill and you can see what charge is currently showing. So if I make that a little bit bigger, there we go. So I've got the first attendance charge rule that's come through for Dr. Jones and it's currently saying that it's £200. Um, so based on the contract that I've picked, obviously with the variations that's been provided, CompuCare is saying this is going to be £200. So if I went back into that appointment, and then put it to uh, a 45 minute appointment. What CompuCare will now do is based on my variations. Yes, that's fine. And if I press save and come back out from there. Um, so now what CompuCare is going to do is um, because I've changed uh, the duration, it's now going to pick up that it actually now affects a different contract um, price um, based on the uh, variations that I've already put in. So if I info only bill, be able to see that that's now worked. There we go. Um, so now this is actually now coming out at £250 rather than the £200 before. Um, so standardly, like um, all of the other contract rules, um, CompuCare is then going to pick the most granular first to try and work its way down. And then obviously it's going to go based on the default option that's available. So, yeah, so that's a, a nice, uh, nice rule now that's uh, now available and hopefully obviously those durations and contact types are going to definitely make that bill in a little bit easier. Um, so staying on um, a charges front um, or billing in general, um, one of the things that we have had um, previously, but it's also happened before, but since the um, PXP iframe has now been available, obviously sometimes there is uh, minor issues um, where it might appear that the internet drops or you get, there's a bit of a, a failure in the transaction and you're not quite sure whether that payment's now gone through. What we've tried to do is we've tried to make that a little bit more obvious to the user that there potentially could have been a transaction that's already gone through for that particular patient. Um, so I'm just going to show you how that now looks in the system. So this was something that was has been there previously. However, there wasn't really a lot of information that was available um, to the user. So they're trying to guess what it was or what it could be or even what it relates to. So if I show you what it now looks like. So if I add, uh, go to add a patient payment. Um, so this is now um, what the warning you've now been displayed with. Um, so uh, currently, well, it used to be past the um, the spring release. Um, you used to just literally just get that there was provisional transactions with no more information. So now what we've added um, is we've added um, additional information around the values, when it was created, the times, and also then we can also drill down to see um, what they actually are. So I can see transaction numbers and I can see all of the information that it now relates to. So normally what would happen is if you, um, you'd you go and um, check, see if it's, it's come through. If it has, great, you can post it like normal. If not, obviously you're going to still want to try and take that payment. Um, so just to show you how it looks um, later in the system, I'm just going to run through as if I've my payment isn't on there and I'm going to still want to add a payment. So let me just fill in a little bit more information and then I can show you what happens next. So essentially what CompuCare is trying to do is make sure that the user definitely knows that there is some uh, outstanding um, provisional transactions and make sure that it's definitely right before you're adding extra um, and taking extra payments because um, obviously it's not something that you uh, it's a lot of admin from a, a hospital side but obviously from a patient experience side it's not great if you're having lots of um, duplicate payments being taken against it. Um, so I'm just going to say that I'm going to just take a, a payment for now so if I press save so again this warning has continued to follow me through um, so it's still saying are you sure you want to take this payment there is some of these over here but I'm, I'm sure yeah I want to still carry on 
and I'm just going to select this. And then if I go to uh, check out, again, it's going to put you with a final warning to say, are you definitely, definitely sure that you want to do this? Um, so obviously, yeah, you could um, check the transactions and it will take you through to the screen that I've just showed you before, or you can press continue and then it will launch the iframe like normal. Um, so, so essentially this is just trying to um, show you, are you definitely, definitely sure this is what you want to do? So hopefully that's going to make it a little bit more obvious to the users that um, whether there is any of these transactions available um, for you taking extra duplicate ones. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so the uh, the final um, enhancement that I wanted to show you is related to orders. Um, so there's a certain scenarios now where we've got um, quite a lot of customers who have um, their clinicians actually um, putting clinical notes and uh, completing their appointments and their clinics in the system, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, but sometimes what can happen is there can be a duplicate service requests that come through. Um, so this may happen from um, adding a service request to um, the forms um, during uh, the consultations or adding separately after. Um, but what sometimes happens is obviously we get lots and lots of duplicate requests and then it's just trying to um, make those a little bit easier to schedule and also being able to say, okay, well, I don't want four blood counts. I only want one. Um, and trying to make that a little bit easier for the user um, to make sure that those are scheduled because obviously it tends to be that this will be later down the line. So uh, we've got a couple of things that are now in place um, to show that. Um, so I'm just going to show you how that now looks. So if I am um, staying on the patient that I'm currently working with, um, so if I add uh, an outpatient booking, obviously there's lots of different ways that you can add your, um, uh, schedule your service request, but I just wanted to show you in this scenario. Um, so if I just select my, uh, just an episode of care, just to get a little bit more information. So currently we now have this hyperlink that now comes down here at the bottom. So I can see this is where my orders would normally put my um, orders or service requests against. Um, so I now can see that I've got uh, for this particular patient, I've got four orders that require scheduling. Um, so I'm going to select that now and I can see that I've got this particular patient has got two full blood counts and two MRIs of the left hip. Um, so from this screen, I can select all of them or I can just select the ones that I would like to use. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to select all of them for this scenario. And then I'm just going to press schedule. Um, so what CompuCare now does is on the far side here, you can now see that I've got a little bit more information around this um, duplicate order. So it's warning the, the user to say, OK, um, out of these four service requests that you're wanting to now schedule, there is actually... Um, two sets of um, multi uh, duplicates, essentially. Um, so it's then going to say to me, OK, well, these are the ones that are now um, are duplicate, uh, duplicated. Um, so I can either opt to consolidate just one and say, OK, that's fine. Um, I only want um, one MRI of the hip, but I did want two blood counts. So you could do that or you can just say, OK, well, I want to uh, consolidate all of them. So then what CompuCare is then going to do, is, as you can see here, um, so over here I've now got, uh, I've got two that have been requested, um, so these stay the same, and then I've got two that are now cancelled. Um, so then if I was to then go through and actually schedule these in the system, um, it would then schedule the two that are still requested, and the ones that have then been cancelled would now have a cancellation reason of um, order consolidated. So this is um, so, uh, like a a cancellation reason that's been um, is from the system. So obviously you can't edit this, um, but that's obviously now going to follow those service requests through. So you can still see that they were there, but you can actually now see what's happened to them and that they haven't just been cancelled for whichever reason, um, that they've actually been cancelled because they've been consolidated with um, the other service requests that were there because they were duplicates. Um, so again, hopefully that's going to make it a, a little bit easier um, when you're um, scheduling some of these orders, especially dealing with some of those duplicates as well. So I think that's uh, everything from um, me. So I'm going to hand back to Tom, who's uh, going to go on with the Q&A. Thank you there to both uh, Imogen and Mark. Uh, moving over to the Q&A, 
Uh, so here's just a few examples of uh, some of the questions that have been asked by your viewing. Uh, so please do reach out to us directly if you haven't had a chance to get your question asked yet. Um, so the first one, with CompuCare moving to release every three weeks, is there an expectation that hospitals will need to upgrade much more frequently? Uh, essentially, the answer to that is no. Um, we still expect that most customers will align themselves with our quarterly releases in line with the, the spring summer webinars. So upgrading sort of two to three times a year. Um, moving to three weekly releases means that customers kind of working with us on specific projects or new customer implementations can take advantage of the latest changes and enhancements and, uh, and then give us feedback sooner. So we, we realise asking customers to upgrade every three weeks isn't practical for most. Uh, the next one, so with the, will the fields from ERS to CC as a CompuCare be remapped to sex rather than gender? Uh, so right now we've not amended this. Um, our understanding is what we've received in the PDF information from, from for the patient as part of an ERS referral is person stated gender. So it's a specific NHS data dictionary field, uh, which is also used in statutory reporting to FIN and, or CDS. Um, so we'll need to check basically with our developers to see exactly what we receive from PDS and see if there's any other mapping or population of biological sex that could be done. And then the last one we're going to look at, so will the notes field be exportable in waiting lists? Uh, so currently it doesn't export the notes out to the CXP, C, CSV extract, sorry. Uh, we only display them in the grid to help the booking user. So we can of course log this as a small change for future build releases of CompuCare. Thank you very much for all those questions. So now all the enhancements you've seen today and more are available on our roadmap site on the link below there. Uh, here you'll find details of all the enhancements to all of our releases and also available on there are links to the YouTube videos to show demonstrations of these enhancements. And just before we conclude uh, today's webinar, if I could point you in the direction of our social media pages. So firstly, we've got a YouTube channel on there. Uh, we've recently released our patient portal video. Uh, so our patient portal allows your patients to access and amend their health information 24 seven from any device. Um, please contact us if you'd like some more information on this. We also have our LinkedIn and Twitter profiles and then also our website, which we keep up to date with all the latest CompuCare related news. And we've also got our contact number and email address should you need us for anything as well. And finally, just to bring us to a close, it's thank you from myself and everybody else at Street Seaver for watching. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon and we shall see you again soon.